Hey guys, this is my first video on consciousness and I intend to make a few of them, so in this one I'm just going to sort of outline what the problem is and why it's such a big problem. Okay, so the mind-body problem is why do matter, material, how can it arrange itself in such a way to give rise to inner subjective experience? How does it do a bunch of neurons and below that a bunch of atoms just vibrating around suddenly create the the colour of blue, the subjective feeling of pain, or the smell of coffee, how does that occur? It's a pretty difficult question. Um, so one thing that an explanation can't include is any explanatory gap. So, I, I mean, no one explicitly says that there are arguments for explanatory gaps, but there are a lot of theories that tend to have them hiding somewhere. So explanatory gap would be something like Okay, physical processes in the brain occur, and then, boom, magic, consciousness. There's something missed out. We haven't explained why it gives rise to subjective mental experience. So, um, Chalmers first outlined what he called the hard problem. Um, the hard problem is in a subjective experience itself. Um, he contrasted this with the easy problems like uh, the binding problem or the difference between wakefulness and sleep, effects of drugs, um, you know, things that are associated with consciousness but aren't associated with subjective feel or qualia, so to speak. Um, but Dennett has heavily criticised Chalmers for even begging this question, and quite rightly so, to be honest. Um, he compares the hard problem of consciousness there's something called the Alain Vital, which was something that people came up a long time with a long time ago before they knew about life. Alain Vital was this sort of substance which um, explained the difference between living things and non-living things. So living things were said to contain the Alain Vital, the essence of life, the spark, so to speak. Um, but that's because they didn't know about um, uh, how reproduction worked how respiration worked, you know, immune systems, they just couldn't explain it, so there was this mystery. Um, then it says Chalmers is doing the same thing with consciousness. You know, his view, and I think it's also mine, is, um, you know, once you've explained the easy problems of consciousness, the hard problem will just go away in the same way that the Alain Vital did, because it's a misconception, and it's reinforced by asking such questions. Um, I mean, um, Chalmers actually said, um, to define the hard problem, he uses something called um, the, the zombie argument, and that's basically, well, imagine anyone else, uh, imagine me, sorry, uh, like, as a zombie. I've got no inner subjective experience at all, there's no, there's no one home up here but I'm communicating to you in the exact same way that you would expect me to if there was. So I'm functionally identical. Um, but he says that a functional explanation, Chalmers says a functional explanation doesn't differentiate between the zombie and the non-zombie, so it doesn't explain consciousness. But I'll talk about the zombie in a, a little bit later in another video that I make. Um, so in, in some senses, it's, it is a misfiring of the imagination on Chalmers' part. So I'm going to talk about a few perspectives that have been uh, dismissed, almost. Although not everyone explicitly accepts them, they still weave themselves back and work themselves into common thought. So, obviously, dualism. Not a good perspective to have, and no one around really accepts that they are a dualist. It's kind of an insult. Um, but dualism would be to say that there's two irreducible um, things in the universe. Um, matter and energy, and thoughts, the mental. So you've got the material and the mental world, and these are irreducible. But then you've got to explain how they interact with each other, you know. It, it just, it's not a realistic standpoint to be able to hold. But, like I said, no one admits to being a dualist nowadays. Um, but another common misconception, which Dennis renamed the Cartesian theatre, um, traditionally it was called the homunculus argument, which is when they were looking at the eyes and perception, they 
um, said, well, you know, light goes in, it gets processed a bit, and then it gets passed to the homunculus. Now, the homunculus was the person that the information was processed for. It's like the, the thing that you think you are. We've all had this conception. Well, at least I've had this conception. You think that you're, you're somewhere in your head, um, in between your eyes, controlling your body, and um, being the thinker of the thoughts. But this, this leads to an infinite regress because you're, you're displacing the subjective experience to the homunculus. But then you've got to explain how he has his subjective experience, and so on and so on ad infiditum. So the homunculus argument doesn't stand up. And although no one really endorses it nowadays, typically the gestalt model of psychology says that you know, we construct this um, framework of how the world is. Um, but of course, then we're not explaining where the experience occurs, so to speak. Um, yeah, so that's just a brief overview of some of the problems in consciousness. I'm going to make another one. Um, I might express more of my own opinions in those, but I think we've made a good starting point. So, see you again.